Good morning, everybody. This is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center. It's just after 10 a.m. Central Time on Tuesday, September 10th. Coming on this morning with the latest on Tropical Storm Francine, which is centered here uh, off the coast of northeastern Mexico, about 120 miles to the southeast of the mouth of the Rio Grande. It's about a little over 400 miles southwest of Morgan City, Louisiana. Uh, Francine's becoming gradually better organized this morning. Maximum sustained winds are still around 65 miles per hour, but we have seen the central pressure reported by the Hurricane Hunter aircraft uh, come down several millibars this morning. So we're starting to see that strengthening trend that we're expecting with Francine and Francine is forecast to become a hurricane later today or tonight. Uh, the other change this morning is that Francine is now moving off a little more steadily in a north northeastward direction at eight miles per hour. And as we look through the next couple of days, we're going to see that northeastward to north northeastward motion continue. It's going to take the center of Francine northeastward across the northwestern Gulf of Mexico with the core staying offshore of coastal Texas for the most part, but then approaching the coast of Louisiana and making landfall sometime Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday evening as a hurricane, perhaps as a category two hurricane. So we could see some substantial wind impacts from Francine. And then the storm is going to continue moving northward and and turn northward and weaken to a tropical storm by early Thursday over portions of Mississippi and then up into the mid-Mississippi Valley as it slows down and loses its tropical characteristics later in the week. So let's break down the individual hazards. We'll start first with the uh, storm surge warning that's uh, been expanded eastward a little bit this morning and now includes uh, the coast of Mississippi along with the uh, Lake Pontchartrain, Lake Maripaw region, all of the Louisiana coastline, all the way over to High Island, Texas. So anywhere in this purple area, if you live in a storm surge evacuation zone, Please follow the advice you've been given by your local officials and, and leave if you've been asked to do so. You do not want to remain in these areas because we could see in some areas here, especially from the Rockefeller Wildlife Refuge over to Port Fourchon, including Vermilion Bay, storm surge inundation somewhere in this region could reach five to 10 feet above ground level. So I'm six feet tall, that's water, four feet over my head potentially. This is a life-threatening storm surge event that's gonna to unfold to, beginning tomorrow morning along the coast of Louisiana. Uh, even to the west of the Rockefeller Wildlife Refuge over to Sabine Pass, three to five feet of inundation is expected somewhere in that area. And for Port Fourchon over to the mouth of the Mississippi River, four to seven feet, three to five feet up along portions of the uh, eastern Louisiana coastline, Lake Pontchartrain and the uh, Mississippi coastline as well. So again, you have today to get out of these storm surge evacuation areas if you've been asked to leave. And many of the coastal parishes along the, the Louisiana coast have ordered either voluntary or mandatory evacuation. So please heed that advice if you've been asked to do so. Again, let's take a look at the wind watches and warnings. We have a variety of them out here. We have a tropical storm warning in effect from Port Mansfield down through Brownsville across northeastern Mexico where we're seeing some of the impacts now. A tropical storm watch for much of the Texas coast up to High Island and then a tropical storm warning from High Island to Sabine Pass. But we have that hurricane warning in effect from Sabine Pass all the way over to Grand Isle. And that's uh, where we do expect Francine to make landfall tomorrow. So every, and these uh, hurricane warnings extend inland up to the west of the uh, New Orleans metropolitan area, up to the near Baton Rouge, we could see, uh, expect to see hurricane conditions somewhere in this area. This is where you could expect to see widespread power outages, tree damage, some structural damage. So please prepare your home and be prepared for the possibility of those hurricane force winds in that area. Farther inland and farther east, we have tropical storm warnings in effect where you see the blue, including the New Orleans metro area, uh, the coastline of Mississippi, all the way up into portions of southwestern Mississippi and south central Louisiana. Tropical storm watches have now been issued for the Alabama coastline, including Mobile Bay, and up into portions of southern Mississippi, as that fast forward motion of Francine is going to allow those tropical storm force winds to ex extend quite a ways inland as we go from Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Uh, on the front of, uh, again, now let's move to the rainfall threat. Now, Francine's going to be moving relatively quickly, but there's already heavy rainfall occurring across portions of Louisiana today. And with the core of Francine making landfall tomorrow, this is the area most at risk of flash flooding. Uh, much of south southern and eastern Louisiana, west, uh, southwestern Mississippi, including Lake Charles, Homa, New Orleans, Hammond, up to Natchez, just south of Jackson. This is a level three out of four risk for flash flooding, and that's really representing the flooding risk that will start Wednesday morning, continuing overnight Wednesday into early Thursday. Uh, again, we're expecting to see four to eight inch rainfall 
rainfall totals somewhere in this area with isolated amounts that could be as high as 12 inches, especially where the core of Francine makes landfall and moves during the day and into the evening and overnight hours, Wednesday into Thursday. Beyond that, uh, beyond Thursday and into Thursday and Friday, we have a broader risk of flash flooding extending from western the Florida Panhandle, western Alabama, much of northern Mississippi, up into the mid-Mississippi Valley, with the, where we could see scattered uh, flash flooding. And again, those rainfall totals in some of these areas could certainly reach two to four isolated amounts as high as six inches or so. So again, know if you live in a flood prone area from freshwater flooding, uh, we've lost more people to flooding from due to rainfall than any other hazard in tropical storms and hurricanes in the United States in the last 10 years. So a couple of reminders of what you should be doing today. Again, conditions along the coastline in Louisiana and the, trop and the storm surge and hurricane warning areas are going to deteriorate very quickly Wednesday morning. Water is going to start to rise along the coast. Rains are going to begin. Tropical storm force winds are going to begin. So you're going to want to be in your safe place to ride out the storm, likely by tonight, and a plan to shelter in place in a safe place out of a storm surge evacuation zone during the day Wednesday and even into Wednesday night until possibly Thursday. Uh, protect your home. Take those last steps today to secure anything outside. Put up hurricane shutters. Cover your windows if you have them. If you're going to go to a shelter, make sure you have everything you need with you. Know what you're going to do with your pets. Help your friends and loved ones who might need help getting ready for the storm or even even evacuating and keeping themselves safe. Again, you want to make sure you have multiple days of non-perishable food, water, any medicine you might need uh, to sustain yourself in the aftermath of the event because you could have power outages. Make sure you charge all your devices and are, again, heeding any advice you're given by your local officials. And let's talk about that post-storm safety in terms of power outages. With a hurricane landfall, we often have widespread power outages. People are going to fire up those generators. They want to run their air conditioning, keep their house and lower lights on, use what they need to use in their home. But make sure you use your generator safely. If you are not properly ventilating it, you can uh, succumb to carbon monoxide poisoning. And in some storms, we've lost more people to carbon monoxide poisoning from improper generator use than, than actual to the direct uh, forces of the storm itself. So again, please be safe after the storm, uh, after the hazards are over in your area. So just wrap up here with the key messages for Francine this morning. Danger of life-threatening storm surge for portions of the upper, upper Texas coast, Louisiana and Mississippi coastlines. So if you're in that storm surge warning area, please follow the advice you're given by your local officials. Damaging and life-threatening hurricane force winds are expected in portions of southern Louisiana on Wednesday in that hurricane warning area. You should rush to protect uh, your life and property and get those, uh, those preparations complete by tonight since tropical storm conditions are expected to begin early Wednesday morning in that area. And then on the rainfall front, uh, Francine's expected to bring heavy rainfall and, and considerable flash and urban flooding risk to much of Louisiana and Mississippi through Thursday. Flash and urban flooding is also possible up into the Mid-South region as we go later into the week. So please stay tuned and keep coming back to hurricanes.gov for the latest on Francine from here at the National Hurricane Center. For information on local weather in your area and local watches and warnings, you can find your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov. And we'll be back with more information on Francine throughout the next couple of days. I'm Mike Brennan at the National National Hurricane Center.